hey, hey, I'm just testing if the email thing works. Yo, hello, can you hear me? Yes, I can hear you. May I know your name, please? I am Bob. Bob, could you please send your email to this number via SMS? Sure, give me a second. Sure, take your time. Gotcha, thanks. So your email is henry underscore angry pants 69 at gmail.com. Yeah, that's it. You got it. Thanks. Let's go. So you just watch that and you're wondering how does that even work? There's a few moving parts and if you actually want to set this up, uh, it takes these four things to make work. So uh, this is specifically for VAPI. We're using NA10 as the automation platform to handle water logic. We're using Twilio for our SMS provider, and we're using Airtable to store uh, this thing here that I'm going to show you. It is called uh, a control URL. And uh, the whole magic why this whole thing works is it's this thing here. It's the control URL. So each VAPI call generates a unique control URL. So that allows you to send live messages to the AI agent during the conversation. This is the key that makes real-time SMS integration possible. So that means when I SMS my AI agent, it can see or read what I sent to it. So the integration flow, how it's going to work, is we're going to start the voice call. This will begin. This, will, this is where our control URL is going to be generated. The next concept is that we need to capture this control URL. And this happens, and we either do this at the start of the call, or what I did as a sent as I used a tool call to send a control URL over to Airtable, and I'll show you guys in a bit. While on the call, the user sends an SMS to the Twilio number. This triggers an, uh, my Entertain webhook that's hooked up to my Twilio, and this passes along the SMS contents and then sends along with the uh, sender's phone number. And that's then what I use, the phone number and the most recent record in my Airtable to check who made the last message and the filter by the phone number and the uh, the date. Um, then what I do is I uh, retrieve that control URL. Once I've got this, I can then send that over to NA10. Once I have this control URL and it exists, I can then send the SMS content to VAPI using this thing. And I can inject the message live into the conversation. And this is where my voice our agent receives the sms content in real time and can now reference it um, during the conversation before you even jump in you'll need something like this you'll need this you'll need a twilio account and you'll need an air table so once we've got these four things the system can work and and i'm going to start off and just show you guys step one and then step two so for step one, we need the voice AI agent. And for that to work, all I had was this prompt right here. I'm just going to leave it here for a sec. So you guys can just pause the video and read it yourself. Then uh, the idea is, as I created a get ready tool and it doesn't really do anything. Uh, it just sends a tool call to my n scenario. The concept here is just to grab the control URL somehow. So my tool in that be looked like this. I called it get ready. This was my description. This was my name. And I put in uh, the URL from my NA10 workflow. The next thing is um, I sent that information over to this workflow. And how that looks like, and I'm just going to jump in here. And then in this little search bar here, I'm going to type in control. And we can see this thing right here. This is exactly what we want. So that was step one, two, and three. Now, step four is the user sends an SMS. So on my phone, I would send an SMS back to my agent, and then it would receive this in my N810 scenario. So what I do is I go into my into this setting, I go production URL, I then click on this, and I copy it over to where my active phone numbers are in Twilio. So you jump into your Twilio account, click on active numbers, find a number that you have your AI agent assigned to uh, underneath where it says a message comes in you'll paste in that webhook URL uh, and <clears throat> what happens is when each time you now receive a message on that number it comes through here so next up once we receive this we would have to do uh, a couple of things so uh, 
we have to set up the logic and it's already done for you. You just have to copy over the NA10 scenario. You'll grab the lookup URL from the table. So you'll grab this thing right here, which is at this step. This is what we are searching for. And here we are filtering by the person's phone number. Um, I've set it a limit of one and a direction of descending in terms of sorting. Descending means it'll go from biggest to smallest. So, and in here, we're just checking whether the control URL exists. And if it does, then we will go to and throw in that control URL into post request with this kind of body uh, where the contents are going to be our SMS um, or email or address or whatever you guys want in here. Um, and then it will update our record with uh, that webhook set up. All right, so I'm going to go through and actually run through that whole call. Uh, hey, hey, I'm just testing if the email thing works. Uh, yeah, hey, um, how are you? Hi, I'm doing well, thank you. May I have your name, please? Hi, yes, Bob. Bob, could you please SMS your email to the number you're calling from? Uh, yep. Gotcha, thanks. So your email is yellow underscore banana 23 at gmail.com. Yep. Uh, yeah, perfect. Could you even spell that out for me? If... Sure, Bob. Here it is, spelled out. Yellow underscore banana 23 at gmail.com. Gotcha, thanks. No worries. Thanks, bye. That's how you do it, ladies and gents. And yeah, so what happened here, I just deleted that one because I realized there was no point in having that HTTP node right there. Um, I think that it solves one major issue in VoiceOver, and that is the ability to get emails live in the VoiceOver agent to say the name or the email properly, or at least capture it. Because at the moment, uh, with people's varying accents, tonalities, uh, background sounds, difficulty of dashes, underscores, ats, and dots with uh, different languages. So these are all extremely hard to try and get around and wrap around. And you can prompt it as much as you want. But uh, what I've seen happen in production when we tried it with some emails uh, is that people usually gave up after two tries and they just hung up, which isn't really what we want. So because we want the voice AI to take care of most of the load for whatever business we've got to set up for so this is one way of doing it, is to capture information this way another one possibly is to capture the uh, information after the call so you could send them a form after the call and they could like you know fill it out i do seriously believe that this is one of the best ways to go about it at the moment if you do want to capture emails subscribe and like and then leave a comment if you thought this was useful and as a last thing, I didn't, didn't mention it, I'll have everything ready uh, below this video in the comments or in the description uh, where you can just like grab the uh, NA10 scenario that I have on my screen right here. Um, and I'll, I'll leave a shared URL to this space. You can just like duplicate and copy into your Airtable. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much all you need. So thank you everyone and peace.